I think it's very easy for people to look at like Chase or Bank of America or Halliburton or Monsanto or DuPont or Syngenta, and they look at these huge corporations, right? Or let's say Chevron and Texaco, and they're destroying the environment. They're polluting, you know, small villages. They're you know wreaking havoc. They're 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 supporting war. You know, they get rich off of war, uh, and then the reconstruction after war. Um, and so they look at these corporations and like, this is why capitalism sucks. This is why business is evil. And it's so tempting to look at it like that. And I think I did as well. Um, and then you, once you learn more about economics and the nature of the state and uh, anarchy and things like that, uh, you gain a deeper understanding about why uh, they're like that. And, and there's, a, there's a phrase that I like, which is hate, hate the game, not the player. Right. So if there exists an institution of of violence and power, um, then, of course, certain companies will want to appeal to that institution to gain favors and protection and immunity. Right. It's only natural that they would want to do that uh, and, and, and through using that institution, um, destroy their competitors. Right. Through protectionist laws and regulations and minimum wage laws and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and only later it made sense to me, like, wow, <laughs> you know, it's not, they're not the root, you know, it's like, it's like you, you, you destroy Monsanto and Chase and all those, and it's like cutting off the heads of the Hydra, the way I look at it, you know, just another one's going to grow back. Another one's going to grow back. I, uh, when people tell me that, you know, what are you going to do in this situation? What if, um, uh, you know, a dark alley and, uh, there's a guy with a gun and there's no police cause you're a stateless utopia. What are you going to do then? <laughs> And uh, it's funny yeah. because, um, you know, I'm not I don't pretend to have all the answers to every hypothetical rabbit hole that that person might come up with, you know. Um, and I think the first person that does pretend that um, you got a question, you got to be skeptical uh, because the idea is not to have a ready made solution for every situ for every problem. Um, you know, if a problem comes up, you deal with it, right? But I think um, what's more important is the way you said is to bring the question back to the individual and say, well, forget about everyone else, right? We can't control everyone else, but you can control yourself, right? So do you use violence to solve problems in your daily life? No. Do you use other people? Do you, do you advocate for other people to use violence to solve your problems? No. <laughs> so there, we established a basic um, understanding of morality and what your moral code is. I think that's good. I, I think you're a good person. <laughs> now, if you can, if you if you become consistent with that, you're not going to delegate um, a right that you don't have to a politician <laughs> to do uh, of the very same um, you know destructive behavior that you're recommending right to other people. So people are afraid. You know, they're afraid of all these things. You know, what if what happened? What if this might happen? What if this might happen? And then you know what? Sometimes you have to live with the uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't have every, every solution, every problem. <laughs> you know? And some people are afraid of that, I guess. You know, it seems they genuinely fear it. So, and, and since, since for me, embracing volunteerism, I have lost that fear of the unknown, of what might happen if, you know, if these people come into the geographical region known as the U.S., what might happen, right? So what, therefore, we should use violence to prevent them to come in? Like, what, <laughs> you know? So I have lost that fear. Giving people the ability to enter any field is a wonderful thing, right? Because, of course, the market will figure out, you know, people will figure out by trying all these people, regardless of if they have a license or not, you know, people are going to try everybody. And then, you know, you're going to, people are probably going to rate them on Yelp and, you know, different places on on uh, on the internet. And, and of course, you're going to figure out the, the, cra the cranks and the quacks from the real <laughs> practitioners. There's, there's no doubt about it. Um, so I'm... Uh, you know, I'm I'm definitely not fearful about that. So it's it's like if you if you need to seek validation for yourself by getting a license, then what does that say about your skills? <laughs>